story of a warrior queen who ruled an African kingdom for 34 years. Greetings brothers and sisters, my name is Osi the Bone Child and today's video is about Amina, one of a few warrior queens who ruled an African kingdom for 34 years in the 1500s. One of the greatest warriors ever to emerge from Africa in the 16th century was Queen Amina of Zazu. Like the great Nzinga of Angora, Queen Amina's leadership skills were discovered early by her grandfather who allowed her to attend state meetings. Her mother, the Queen of Bakwa from Turunku, an influential political figure in Amina's hometown, Ikware noticed Amina's military acumen and promised to raise her to become a future queen. But she surpassed all expectations. She did not only remove all obstacles to her nation's direct access to the Atlantic coast for trade-related reasons, but she also expanded Zazu's territory up to Nupe and Kwarafa. To ensure this, she personally led military expeditions of over 20,000 infantrymen to inaccurable battles. A woman leading men to battles. Born around 1533 in Zazu, now known as Zaria, in the northern part of Nigeria, to a wealthy family who made fortunes from the sale of leather goods, cola, salt, horses, and imported metals. Amina acquired battle skills while understanding with the soldiers of the Zazu military. Upon the death of Bakwa in 1566, the rule of Zazu fell on her young brother, Karama, as customary in those days. After 10 years of the throne, Karama died and the leadership button fell on Queen Amina who had gathered much popularity among Zazu's people and militarily owing to her exemplary leadership skills and for the fact that she was unbeatable even as a female warrior. Thus, in 1576, she became the Queen of Bakwa. From the year she took on the mantle of her nation's leadership till the last years, Amina was always waging one battle or another. She became an accomplished warrior, ensuring safe passage for Zazu and other Hausa traders throughout the Sahara region, conquering all the towns as far as Kwarafa in the north and Nupe in the south. At the time, she dominated the entire area of Kano, Gabil, Katsina, Daura, and Rano and became a threat to nations in the Western Sudan and Mali. She invented the use of metal armor for the purposes of warfare in Hausa land, including iron helmets and chain mail, as well as building fortifications around Zazu and her military camps, some which endure till today. The practice of Electing defensive walls gained currency all over Hausa states, and these walls are known today as Amina walls or Amina's walls. Even so, some of these walls were built after her reign. She strengthened the Zazu and improved the kingdom's wealth and power. Legends have it that she prayed before expeditions at a place called Dusenhea a site which can still be seen today in her hometown. In spite of her legendary status, she did not have a family of her own. One of the reasons for this was that she had fear of losing her power. The story is that she slept with men captured during expeditions and killed them the following day to keep her actions secret. But this eventually led to her death, as a particular man she slept with escaped one night and Amina became so worried that she took her own life. It was during a military campaign at Dakina in the present-day 
Koji state of Nigeria. It must be noted that the periods of her birth and place of death remains controversial among its scholars. For instance, while some said she died at Dekina, others mentioned Atagara. But one thing is certain, Queen Amina's legend was not a fiction, but a story full documented by successive historians and chronicles through generations. For her bravery and accomplishments, a statue was built in her honor at the National Art Theater, Lagos, Nigeria, and several educational institutions in Nigeria bear her name. Hey, what do you think about Queen Amina's story, especially the part when she had to take her own life because a man she had slept with had escaped and therefore she was very sure that her secrets are going to be known out there. My name is Osi the Bone Child and I'll be waiting for your comments in the comment section. Love you all brothers and sisters. Hey, please don't forget to subscribe to the African Diaspora News channel and the African Diaspora News Insider. Until next time, see you in another video. Bye-bye.